this. But I'll help to make this better. Um, you always start your proof with a given, and that is not what's used here. Okay, yeah, there it is. So that is a given. All right. Almost always the first one, first couple are givens. You probably saw that in class. Yeah. Now, if FB, FB bisects AFT, that means that angle one is congruent to angle two. And that's what it says here. Angle one is congruent to angle two. So what, what I think gets overly complicated here is that whatever you have here as a statement generally becomes the reason over here. It's the definition of an angle bisector. So you're looking for something like, like that in the dropdown. And see, I've got that word there, bisects, bisects an angle. The reason here is the definition of an angle bisector. Yeah. Is that available in the drop down there? Yeah. All right. So angle one and angle four, it's saying that they're congruent. Okay, so there's a lot of things that you can say about two angles, a lot of reasons that they could be congruent here. But the thing that sometimes is necessary is to, is to remove some lines. This is angle one, this is angle four. Do you remember at all the, the one where if they meet, it's kind of an X, why the angles are congruent, what that's called? Uh, it's called... And to make an X, you actually use two Vs. That might help. Yeah, they're like the same. They make the same angle. Yeah. Kind of. There's kind no of. good way to describe it, but just they do that. They tend to do that. So these are called vertical angles. Vertical angles. Vertical angles. And again, it's probably a definition of vertical yeah. angles. Or vertical angles are congruent, something like that. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So the last one, no, sorry, not the last one. The next one here is probably the most odd because it you don't know where it comes from. So I'm gonna have to lay this out for you. If angle two is congruent to angle one, and angle one is congruent to angle four, do you see how these match right here? Yeah. It's kind of like a, a linkage. And, and that means that now that these are congruent, and this is called the transitive property. So if, if A leads to B and B leads to C, and we, and we, we kind of use this in um, when we're telling stories or drawing like conclusions, you know, if, if, uh, well, be careful here with the examples, but um, anyway, th this is the transitive property. That the, it all, the summary is that A leads to C. Yeah. So probably that's there. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Now the last one looks a lot like this one. Last line looks like the previous line. You're like the only thing different is this measure. So it's weird in, in geometry, like you can't just say, oh, well, since the angles are congruent, the measure of the angles are congruent, like it's not the same thing. It's, it's like saying that the angles are congruent, but if you were to measure them, their measures are congruent. So there's something in this drop down that says like uh, congruent angles have the same measure. Like uh, something like that. Yeah, congruent angles. All right. So, do you 
check these as you go or are you just or are you just uh, like populating them and hitting save and yeah oh, let's see. let me know if there's any wrong or any feedback or anything like that yeah that is correct okay all right is the second one what's the second proof is it the is it the one with letters v w z x y or is it the one with letters x y z that's a midpoint uh v w z all that okay well we really should do the midpoint one first is that okay if we do them out of order because it's more yeah it's there's a there's a learning opportunity here to do it this way all right yay proofs okay given y is the midpoint of xc do you see how it starts with the given yeah That's you almost always start with the given thing. yes and sometimes they give you more than one given and it either appears here or sometimes it appears in the middle of the proof like you've heard the you know expression you get the low hanging fruit first like do the easy stuff first you know make sure you get those right for sure and then we talked about this idea that if y is the midpoint of xz that means that these are congruent Yeah. And that's what this is saying right here. So you're you're seeing also a theme here that's a definition of well, the definition of the thing that we just said. Definition of a midpoint. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Now the next one look really similar to the previous one. It just doesn't have the line above it. Yeah. So it's like, what could that be? Well, it's like, okay, just because the line segments are congruent, that that this, this next one says that it's like congruent line segments have the same length or the same measure. Something like that. All right. Now the next one here says XZ, which is the whole length, equals XY part plus YZ, which is the other part. It's like you went to Subway, they cut your foot long in half, that half plus that half equals the whole thing. So it's 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 something about where you're adding up line segments. So you're looking for something like the uh, segment addition, because you're adding postulate, something like that on there. You're looking for the words that describe what you already see. These are segments, you're adding them up. Now, uh, the next thing here is, and it really, this is this was the challenge, and you, you, you'll get more familiar. It's like, you have to look line by line. It's like, well, what's the same? What's different? Between these, what, what do you notice is the same or what's different between them? The, the second one, it's uh, X, Y instead of Y, Z. Right, and notice that comes from right here. So what are we actually doing? Well, we're replacing, replacing YZ with XY. Replacing is another word, is, is in math, we don't use the word replace, we use substitution. Oh. So maybe substitution property of equality, something like that. And then, so again, you got to do the same thing kind of line by line. It's like, all right, what's the same? What's the difference it's line by line here? Well, the left side's the same, but the right side, it's it's not. That's interesting. This one, 
this these dots are blue. Wasn't it red on the previous one? That's really interesting. Oh, it's because I have weird lights. Okay. Oh, cool. So what is, you know, XY plus XY becomes two XY. Like what are you, like what's a word that you see that could be part of the answer here? Like what are you doing to go from XY plus XY to two XY? The, uh, the two. Yeah. So you're looking for like, you're, you're looking for something like addition or maybe it's um, simplify. It depends what's in the drop down. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that's it for this one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any questions, thoughts on those? No. It would be good for you to go back and try these on your own at some point. Um, it's not fair for me to ask you to do any of these on your own, uh, but yeah, because they suck. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> though I won't be there on the test of the quiz. So you really want to figure out how you're going to proceed on these, um, and they're all different. It's not like when I we're doing a factoring and I could give you one just like it. Like this is the only one like this. So the more problems you do, the better chance you'll have of. Of being, uh, being successful. All right, so we got a you know new problem here. Given angle V Z W, so it's good to it's it's good to uh, label stuff in the drawing there. So V Z W, that's that one there, is congruent to X Z W like that. All right, and that's that's given. That's given. Yeah. Only one given. That's okay. So the next line, like you've got to start saying, okay, what's the same? What's the difference between, you know, line one to line two? Like what's going on there? They are uh, congruent. I think that's. So this, this first line is congruent. Do you see that they're the exact same yeah, angles? They just added an M in front. Same. The yeah. M does not stand for Matthew. It stands for measure. Math, if you want, uh, measure measure meaning the measures of the angles are the same. So congruent angles have the same measure. Yeah. So it's like you look at something like your symbols, and you're like, they're the same. That's what the congruence is. But if you were to get a ruler out and measure them, that's the M. All right, uh, so for the next one here, it says the measure of angle W, Z, Y. So let's, let's kind of look at that. That's this big, big angle here is the measure of angle W, Z, X plus the measure of angle X, Z, W. So it's kind of like saying part, part, plus part equals whole. Yeah. So like, it's like, well, what is that? Well, it's, it's the, it's, it's the addition. You're adding them up, but you're adding up the angles this time. Angle, addition, postulate. Okay. 
All right. So the next line here, you've got to look at these two lines. You know, what is, what is, the, let me actually number them. That's, that's one of the things you're not doing. One, two, three, four. To go from line three to line four, what, uh, what do you see? There is the second on the, the, the change from measure of x, uh, z, y to v, z, w. Um, the second part in the, oh, over there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's all this change. Like, how, like, what allows us to do that? What What do you see in the previous line lines that allows you to do that? Uh, v Z W equals X Z Y. Yes, yeah, so you're essentially substituting in. We talked about this idea that you don't replace. You just Some sort of substitution property. Yeah. Okay. Now the next line is um what is the next line? So the next line again, sometimes it's like even hard for me to figure out what's changed and what's different here. Looks like they, okay, uh, I see what's going on, maybe. Measure of WZX, that's right there, VZW equals, so they're, they're putting, so in line five here, this is very hard to see, but Try to, I'll try to color code it here. This is the same as this. This is the same as this. Okay. Yeah. But instead of instead of um this right here, this X Z V. Yeah. That is where it's different. Um that is. And you you might be wondering, well, how how are they doing this? W Z X. So they're they're going uh they're going uh the other direction now. They're looking at this one here, kind of like a reset. They're looking at this this another need to get another color. This big angle. Yeah. There. So it's it it like you gotta be careful because it almost looks like it's it's the same. Like it, it almost looks four leads to five. It's almost like a reset in the proof. It's back to the angle addition postulate. Okay. So the next line here, it's like, well, how do we even get to the next line? Well, what they're trying to show you is that see how the greens are the same? Yeah. Both of these. So then the the part, the left of the equal sign, this right here is down there, and this right here is going down there. You're basically again, you're like substituting, I think. I don't know what the drop downs are, but I'm going with substitution. Could be transitive. You know, if, if, and think of this, this first red one is like A, A leads, let me switch colors again. If A leads to big B, and this is big B leads to C, then A leads to C, it would be the transitive property.
All right, and then the last one here, you can see that it's really similar, you know, lines, line six and seven, they're very similar, except that they have that M. So you'll, you'll start noticing that pattern when it goes from like without the M to the M, you know, you'd say congruent angles have the same measure. All right, any uh, questions, thoughts on that before we move on to yet another proof here? Uh, no. So the, like what I want you to be able to take away from what we've done with these problems is that you should be able to get a fair number of these correct without really understanding it because you know where to put givens in, you know kind of what to look for to be able to answer, uh, you know, answer like, well, how did one change from the other? Um, like, like I would hope by now you would know the reason for the first one is, yeah. is the given. Okay. And, and typically the second one comes from the first one. It's typically a definition of whatever is here. Well, it's a definition of a linear, linear pair. Right now, this next one actually does like one, two, three, line three leads from line two. If two angles are supplementary, that means that they add up to 180. When, when like, just like when one leads to two and two leads to three, again, it's a definition of whatever you just said, which is in this case, supplementary angles. Like you don't even know what to need to know what it is. You just need to know that it comes from the preceding line. All right, now, measure of angle one equals measure of angle three. This actually comes from line one. Angle one is congruent to angle three right there. It's from the given, but it's it's kind of like when we say angle one congruent to angle three, then measure of angle one equals measure of angle three. Look for the wording that kind of allows you to go from angles to then measure there. Um, what 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 do you think that is? We did this in a couple of the other problems there as well. Oh congruency is that so the it's it's that Wait, no, whole thing where, where congruent angles have the same measure yeah so you're, you got to really that m means measure you really got to you know congruent angles have the same measure All right, so now what about this measure of angle three plus measure of angle two equals 180. So 
what's going on there. And again, we're just looking at the, like we, we can get into how to actually diagram this and all that, but like what's going on here? Well, um, it actually comes from line three. What do you see from, and it's okay to go back more than one line. What's the difference between line three and line five? It's a uh, uh, measure, measure of angle three instead of measure of angle one. Right. So why are we allowed to do that? Well, it's what's here in line four. So whenever you're replacing, what is the word that we use for replace in, uh, in this course? Uh, substitute. Substitutions. So you're looking for some sort of substitution property of equality. And then the last one here, the last one here, it's it's kind of the reverse. Like we, we did the definition of supplementary angles leads to the fact that the angles add up to 180. Now we're saying that since it's 180, they are supplementary. And so it's it's related to this definition of supplementary angles, except when you're going backwards in proof, you use the word converse. Did you did you see that? So you can think of the definition, the definition is when you're going forward, but when you're going backwards, it's the converse. Okay, um, what thoughts do you have on proofs? Any feedback for me? Not, not the funnest and uh, exciting and engaging thing. Um, probably, probably the most unmath-like thing in math is figuring out what, why, why does this, what you know, this. Yeah, so there's there's a whole there's a whole kind of division of math. There's applied mathematics, and then more of the theoretical. And most of the work that you've done in in your school is in the applied part of math. What we're doing now is more in the theoretical um, side, and uh, it's not particularly useful, if you ask me. Now, there's people who think this is the most important stuff ever. So they would argue uh, I'm more in the, you know, let's let's use it for something. Um, but, you know, like you could start to say the same thing about art. You know, art is very, uh, you have to have a different appreciation for it. This is almost art in some ways. You know, some people are saying, no, no, I want functional. I want to know what I can use it for. It has to have a purpose. Okay, so let's look at... Uh, new problems here um looking at five five here did you already do one through four or you just just didn't send those over yeah i, I already did one through four. Oh, good good so one of the things you'll do a lot in geometry is you may even draw a picture um i recommend doing that even if you think you know how to do it it's just better if you if you've got a picture so this is a b D, is it okay or clear why B is on the vertex? Yeah, because it's, it's like it's the one in the middle. Exactly. All right. And then BD, BD bisects it. So that means that the angle, the angle kind of in this top is the same as this one on the right. So ABD is 2x plus 50. And the one in the bottom here is 5x plus 5. What do you know about these two angles? 
What does it say here? Um, what does it mean if it bisects? It means it equally divides. They're equal. They're equal. Yeah. Yes. All right. Which means that 2x plus 50 equal 5x plus 5. And this is why algebra 1 is your prerequisite to geometry. You have to be able to solve an equation like this. Is this something you think you can solve or would like to try to solve? Yeah. I shall try that. Uh, 15. Say that one more time. 15. Yeah, X is 15. Very good. Now, uh, this problem asks you to find X, which means we are done. Okay, but sometimes they want you to figure out the angle measure, in which case you would not be done. And so we see that in, in problem six. Problem six, it's implied that you will find X. you will find X first. So uh, what I would recommend you do, I want you to try this one on your own, is I'd recommend you make a drawing if you want. See this, uh, it's always a good idea. It's up to you if you do that, but I want you to solve for X first, and then uh, we'll talk about what to do beyond that. But I'd like you to try this one on your own, please. Let me know if you have any questions. All right. I got 40. Well, for Sorry, you said X, you say X is 40 or that's your that's the angle. Oh no, X is 15. Oh, X is 15. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. Good. And then uh and then you put that back into which one? Uh C A B. So you don't have CAD, right? You've got the two angles together. Yeah. So you have to first find the measure of angle CAB. That's why that's why sometimes I have you do stuff kind of just oh, you know, wait, yeah. okay. I, so I, CAB I, is 40, that's for sure. But what yeah. about measure of angle bad? Well, 
Well, you shouldn't be surprised that it is also 40 yeah. because they're congruent, right? Um, but it's sometimes you you do all the work and you realize, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's okay. But C A D add add is the is the one where you add these up. So 40 uh, plus 40 is is 80. That's where sometimes the picture really helps because you um because you 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 know, oh yeah, C A D is the whole angle. Now, one of the things you'll notice in this course is there are kind of two types of problems that you'll see. You're either setting equal or they add up to something. And that something depends on where you're at in the course. It could be, it could be 90, it could be 8, 180, it could be 360, it could be a lot of things. So, uh, but these are those guidelines. It's like, well, if you don't know what to do, if you're really stuck, you can always kind of go back to one of these overarching, you know, principles of the course, if you will. Uh, so let's, uh, I'm actually gonna do eight. I'll maybe have you do seven. Uh, let's look at eight first. So it says two angles form a linear pair. Any idea what a linear pair is? It's, like, um... It's okay if you don't. I'm just just asking. Two things, like two things that are on the same, uh, like line, I think. Yes. So this is a line. If I call this x and this y, they form a linear pair. A linear pair adds up to, to one eighty. Yeah. Okay. Now, this class is most closely related to a vocabulary. Uh, this part of the course, MOOCs, it's like vocabulary. I don't know if you still get those in your English class where you get, you know, a list of words each week that you need to memorize. Uh, you really do want to make note cards or get a Quizlet going or find one already. Like, you have to know what all of these mean. And yes, there's a lot of them, so on and so on. All right. So the measure of one angle... It's three times the measure of the other. So let's let's say X is the first angle. Y, Y is three times the measure of the other angle, 3X. Okay. So that means that it's it's not it's not just X, it's X plus 3X equals one 180. So this is a scenario where your your angles add up to something. In this case, they add up to to 180 because it's a linear a linear pair. All right, can you uh, could you try solving this for x for us, please, down here in this equation? Uh, 45. X is 45. Good. Now, is it asking for the value of X? Is that what it says here? Does it say find the value of X? Nope. Nope. It says to find the measure of each angle. Well, we've got one of them, but now we need Y. Y is 3X. 3 times 45 is 135. Now, some teachers are really particular about you putting that degree symbol there. I obviously don't grade you your uh, your assignments, but uh, that could be something to look out for. All right, so you got that down. Yeah. I, I want you to try the previous problem here, number seven. 
you'll notice that it is really, really similar, meaning like it's two things that add up to something else. So they're giving you HGE, that's 110. No, yeah. well, that's terrible. Ooh, that's really bad. EGF is 110. There we go. HGE is 3X plus 11. And what do they add up to? They add up to 16X. 16. Yeah. So the, the equation is the part plus the part equals the whole. So see if you can set that up and solve for X, please. I have uh, X equals nine. That is correct. Very good. Uh, I could hear you kind of working through that. Always good that you're able to work it out on your own. Uh, you end up getting uh, 117 equals 13x, x equals 9. Uh, are you allowed to use a calculator in this course? Uh, yes. Okay. Good to know. Um, it might ask you then, even, I know it says to find value of x. That could be like part A of the question. Part B could be, and we might as well do that real quick here to find the measure of angle, like E H G H G E, which is the three X plus 11. And then your part C might be to find the measure of angle H G F like that. So just keep that in mind. You may be asked to do a bit, bit more. Questions, thoughts on that? Uh... No, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now we didn't get to everything on here. You know, you got a couple more problems, looks like, to solve on your own. But again, you're either going to set them equal or they add up to something. Um, do your best to work through those. And uh, great job today. Always appreciate having you on the schedule. Let me go ahead and stop the recording here.